Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I have got a very special video. In today's video, we are going to be checking out the all new Radix 2 by Brain FPV. And this is not an ordinary flight controller. This is an H7 flight controller. And these flight controllers with these microprocessors on them are really pushing the bar. And I'm super excited to present this to you guys. Check it out. See what it's all about. And let's see, is it going to live up to the H7 hype? And also, also, let's go over some of the features because I hear they're great. Let's go! All right, pilots, let's dive in and let's see what this is all about. All right, so you rip it open and you've got a little Ziploc baggie with some cool PCB trace on it. And that's just a design. And actually, if you've ever bought a Brain FPV uh, fitted cap, the bill comes with that same design on it. How cool. So let's see what actually comes inside of the package first. So if I pull everything out, ooh, ooh, okay. We've got some type of little uh, cut a diagram. We've got some cool little uh, foamy dealios, and that's pretty cool. They took the time to put a little treat inside of there. That's pretty cool. We've got our connectors and our grommets. Okay. We've got what appears to be our actual flight controller, which I am super stoked to open that up and see what comes inside. And then we've got a little sticker pack. They always include this. They've always included this. On the back of here, we've got where we can pull up and download our step-by-step -step manual, watch and set up videos. We've got a user group and we've got support. They're basically saying, look, if you need help, don't be shy, reach out to us, we'll help you. So I'm gonna cut it right here. And this is static shielding plastic. This is not your regular bag. This is designed to keep static from getting in there and harming any of the components. Not that I think it really would, but safety measures matter. All right, there is our board. Holy magnificent. All right, so we've got the matte black all the way around, and then once you add your white grommets, that will look really nice. And that has been the Brain FPV signature for a very long time, where you've got your blackboard, white grommets, and it looks great. All right, so looking on top, I mean, right away, you can see this holy moly Jesus uh, size of a microprocessor. And I would like to give you something for some reference. I'm going to pull this guy here. This is a normal like F4, F7 microcontroller. Look at the difference in size of these between each other. This is the H7. This is either an F4 or an F7. Uh, I'm not really sure. Let me look. Boom. That's an F405. So that is a regular F405 microcontroller and that is an H7. Look at the size difference in those two. This is an STM32 H7 processor. This is running at 480 megahertz with one megabytes of RAM. That is a powerful, powerful board. You can put loads and loads of UARTs, loads and loads of motors, uh, I2Cs. I mean, this thing does it all. These are truly, truly phenomenal. All right, pilots, so let's dive into the features. <sighs> what does it come with? What does this have? Why are you charging what you're charging? Why does it come with a everything is magical foam? Why? What is so good about your Brain FPV board? Well, if you have any history with Brain FPV, you know that the original Radix was a, I mean, it was just a great board and it was packed with features at the time and probably all the way up until now, subtracting this board, the Brain FPV board was the go-to for X-Class drones. If you want to watch my build series on a beast drone, it's a uh, two and a half foot drone. It's a monster, complete monster. Propellers bigger than your entire hand. I mean, they're like this big. The thing is a monster and it's running just an itty bitty little Radix flight controller, which is just designed to handle the power, handle the flight characteristics. I mean, these things are great. They've always been great at designing flight controllers. So now with the Radix 2, the question I have is this the new go-to for X-Class? If you're gonna build a big drone, 
do you want this on it? That's a very good question. So let's dive into some of our features. We've got the new USB-C, and that's important because not only is it faster, not only is it stronger, you don't have any uh, polarization in the sense of like, oh, it can't go upside down, it has to go top, whatever. You don't have to worry about that. Just plug it in and go, and they just seem to do better. They're just nicer. I like them. That's what I want to stick with. Also, we've got a brand new accelerometer. That is the gyro. We've got a uh, latest and the greatest Bosch SensorTech BMI 270 gyro. That is super awesome. If you're into actual stabilization and things like that, then you might also be interested in the latest generation Bosch SensorTech BMP 388 barometer with very accurate altitude readings. That is important, is it not? If you are going to be uh, using level mode, angle mode, whatever, uh, return to home, these things are very important. If you're like me, full acro, don't use none of that crap. Hey, maybe we can just brag about having it on the board, but we don't really need it. It's really not important. All right, now on the board, I'm looking around and I'm looking and I'm not seeing the traditional OSD chip that is usually used quite impressive. We have a new OSD chip on board and this one is fully graphical on screen display with gray levels and transparency. So that means once you dive into Betaflight and you learn how to use it, you can do much cooler things with the actual OSD. How cool is that? So moving on, another cool feature that they have added on this board is dual camera. I don't know why you might need that, but if you do, it's nice to have it. You'll find on the board there's a VI1, video in one, and there's a VI2, that would be your video in two. That means that you can connect two different cameras. You wouldn't run them at the same time, but with the flick of a switch on your radio setup in the modes tab, you can actually switch between two different cameras. Pretty cool. All right, next up we've got our VTX pit switch. To turn on and off the video transmitter, voltage for the VTX can be done at 5 volts or the battery voltage, and the switch has an integrated high-speed resettable fuse to prevent damage or accidental shorts. I'm throwing in the flag here. This is crazy. Think, let's think about this for a second. The high-powered resettable fuse, that's a PTC fuse. That's great. If you don't know what that is, think about, do you know what a smoke stopper is? Who knows Who knows what a smoke, where's my smoke stopper? Who knows what a smoke stopper is? I want you to see this. See this? See that big green thing right there? That is a PTC resettable fuse. And what that is, is that is a device that when it detects a short, it cuts off voltage, doesn't let any through, which is what keeps and protects your stuff when you power it up on the bench through a smoke stopper. That's why you should always be using one. If you don't have one, I'll link one down in the video description for you. But to think that they put one of these on the VTX so that way if you accidentally connect this wrong or you short out in any sense, it will actually cut off the voltage, stop you from frying your board, and then once you pull off, every, every fuse has its own uh, cool down time, but once it cools down, it'll naturally reset itself without you lifting a finger, and now you can try again and hopefully not short out your board. That is sick. All right, so let's keep moving on. We have a 32 megabyte built-in flash memory. That means you've got 30 megabytes available for logging, settings, and storage. Where that comes to play also brings in the very next feature. And what that is, is that is the driverless flashing. And with the Brain FPV USB mass storage bootloader, you can actually put the firmware onto the board. So all you're doing literally, uh, ultimately, is you're taking taking firmware as a, as a storage file, you're putting it onto the flight controller in its storage spot, right? When you plug the flight controller into the computer, it'll open up just like any other uh, USB flash drive, memory card, something along these lines, and you drop the firmware into it, and then when you plug in the flight controller for the next time, it just runs, well, it just boots off of that firmware instead of the other one. And what's really cool is it knows the difference between the two. So if you have an older firmware and a newer firmware, you don't have to worry about deleting the old one. You just add the new one, and it will automatically boot off of the newer firmware. All right, so the next thing, and something very cool, is on this board, uh, and we'll we'll dive in closer and take a closer look. But right here, you're going to notice a little LED right there. And that is a full RGB status LED 
with customizable colors. That's really cool. You want to give us a status, that's fine, but how about you let me pick the colors? Huh? I like it. Very smart. Moving right along, this thing here comes with eight motor output, and they are all supporting bi-directional D-shot for RPM filtering. All outputs are available on connectors for easy connection of one or two 4-in-1 ESCs. That means you can connect two 4-in-1 ESCs and run eight motors on this one flight controller. Moving right along, we have up to six serial ports. Those are your UARTs. We have six of them. That means if I go around this board, I'm going to find UART 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. You get the picture. There is a lot of them on there, and they are all already inverted. That means they come with integrated inverters. Now, right down here, you'll see that we've got an I2C port if you want to hook up any type of sensor or uh, infrared, anything like that. We've got that guy here, so that's nice. I, I don't really know how common that is. I don't think that I've ever used it, but it's on here if you need it and if you want it. We've also got a buzzer output. You get into these fancy schmancy boards and they forget about the basics, a buzzer. How nice it is just to have a buzzer. And we've got D-Shot now where you can buzz with the motors and blah, blah, blah. Moving right along, we have camera control. Camera control. What does that mean? That means that on here with your output for configuring analog cameras, you can't do this with your DJI camera, but for your analog camera, you can configure them and you can have your actual camera control, which is sweet as you can get into your camera and actually control your settings of your camera through your flight controller by hooking a wire up to the board. You've got to have that wire available from the camera, so if you're interested in that feature, make sure your camera can handle it and you'll be good to go. Up to 8S. Oh, this guy is up to 35 volts right here on this board. That means I can take up to an 8S battery. That means I can take a 6S and a 2S, put them together. I'd have up to 35 volts and I can wire it directly to this board. That's nice. And lastly, I know it's not really that important because pretty much all of them have it, but this board has right here an LED pad. And that is where you can connect your LEDs and actually run and program LEDs. All right, so right here is our actual wires and connectors. I didn't go over that. I don't plan to go over that because right here you'll see you've got a full wiring diagram and you can find that same diagram online. So I'm not really gonna go into how to wire this. If you have questions about the wiring though, feel free to drop that down in the comments. I'll do my best to help you out. Now also, powering VTX, bridge one of the two other jumpers to select five volts of VBAT. So that's very simple. So there's a jumper right here for, v, uh, for your VTX. It says VTX right here, and then there's a jumper for it, and you either jump right there and you've got full power heading to that pad for your VTX, right? So when you power up your VTX, you're gonna take that wire, you're gonna solder it, and in order to decide how much voltage is gonna come out of there, VBAT, which means whatever you have connected on the battery, or five volts, which means they're gonna send it through the regulator and then you'll get a clean five volts. That's up to you based upon your uh, VTX. All right, pilots, real quick, before we close out this video, let's dive into the scope and let's take a quick look. Let's see, how did they do on their soldering? How does the components look? How's the layout? How's the pads? Where's some stuff at? Let's take a close look. Let's see what's going on. All right, so diving in real quick, we can see that we've got our ground. There's that LED pad that we talked about. Here's a full UART right here. We talked about camera control. If you have camera control, that's where you're gonna solder it, right there. Then you've got your VI1, we talked about that. That's video in one for your first camera. So if you're only gonna solder up one camera, only worry about that. Five volts ground. This is that RGB I just talked about. This is a fully programmable RGB. How cool is that? And I think that's also your status indicator. All right, let's keep moving along. We've got our USB-C right there. How nice is that? All right, we've got an inductor. We've got a nice push button. This right here is just a testing pad. Don't worry about that and don't touch it. Don't solder anything here. If you need to test something and you know what you're doing, feel free. 
All right, moving across the top, we've got our ground, we've got power, we've got another UART. We've got half of a UART here, that's TX1, so that probably and most likely tells me that that is not for a regular UART use. If you're gonna wire something up, don't put it there. That is gonna be used for, and I'm gonna take a good guess based on the fact that our VTX is here, our video out is here, huh, what's that? So that means that that right there is going to be for smart audio, right? Because why else would they put that there? This pad right here is going to go to those jumpers that we talked about, which is actually on the other side of the board. So we'll go over that in a minute. But that right there is what's going to control that. So when you jump those pads, right, like we talked about, 5 volts, or you jump your VBAT, that is the pad that's uh, affected by that, okay? All right, so you've got a ground right there. There's our very nice new barometer right there. You've got some connectors, uh, resignator, diodes, uh, other fun stuff. All right, let's jump over to the back real quick. All right, so we've got our I2C, another UART. VI2, that is your second camera. If you want to run a second camera, that's where you'll do it. You'll actually set up your switch though in Betaflight. That's not going to be a hardware related thing. You'll just wire up the two cameras and then everything will be controlled through the Betaflight. All right, so we've got five volts and a ground. Okay, great. Heading down over here, Blage, Blage. All right, I don't want to take up too much, too much more time. Uh, right here, it looks like this is uh, revision one, so that means this is the main juice in the Mac Daddy. Hopefully, we've got some more revisions coming with some new features. All right, 3.3 volts, ground, power, another UART. All right, RX1, another UART, and RSSI. All right, there's those jumpers I just talked about, so check me out. If you want power, your VTX uses full power. Jump these two pads right here. Your VTX only uses five volts. Jump these two pads right here, okay? All right, here's your ground power VBAT. You've got your current sensor. Now, current is different than your voltage measurement. That's what they told you in the beginning. Your VBAT pin is used for both powering both voltage measurements and powering. That's different. This is current. All right, current, five volts. You got your buzzer minus. Where is our buzzer plus? Okay, we'll find that in a minute. And we've got our UART 4. Oh, okay, here it is, 5 volts. So very simple, you've got a buzzer, you wanna connect it, you'll connect 5 volts here for your buzzer, and then you'll connect the ground from your buzzer to here, which will actually be the controller. One last thing, let's take a look at this big, beautiful MCU. Geez, that thing almost takes up the entire screen. Look at that, STM32H750VBT6. This thing is sick. All right, so I hope that you guys learned a little bit about the H7. I hope that you guys learned a little bit about the Radix 2. If you weren't planning on getting one, hopefully you are now. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If there's more that you want to learn about this guy, you want to see it get wired, you want to see it in the air, you want to see me put it in a build, let me know down in the comments. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and I will see you on the next one. Bye.